everyone, welcome. Welcome to the first video of two that's focused on the development stage. Within this video, we'll focus on shots, genres, angles, and storyboarding. So, I'm guessing you all have an idea for your film already. If you don't, then I highly suggest you go back and you watch the first video so you can have an understanding of how you can gain your idea for your film. So, for those of you who have watched that video, I hope that you have an idea that is focused on someone's memory. If not, that's fine. Maybe you can use a memory of your own. Yeah? Great. So, now we've got an idea. We have to now take it through to the development stage. And ideally, we want to make a storyboard. But before we get onto that, I want to talk about genres. Genres. There are so many film genres. To name a few, there's comedy, there's horror, there's family. Um, this list has a great selection of different genres and also a short description of what that genre is. So this list does not name all of the genres. So I do suggest you go and do your own search. Go on various different websites so you can learn all of the different genres that are out there. But to name some, there is thriller, there's documentary, there's animation, there's mockumentary, so there's so many that aren't on that list that are also really great. So do your own research as well. Right, so now you've done all your research on all of the different film genres, what we need to do now is we need to look at what film genre your idea fits into. So, there are two ways to do this. You can either look at your idea, your story, and then look at the different genres and see which one it fits into. Easy peasy. Or you can challenge yourself. Ooh. Right, so you can write down a few different genres on a small piece of paper, put them into a bowl, a hat, a cup, and then pick one out and there you are. That's your genre that you'll be making your film in. <laughs> so shots are super, super important to think about when you're in development stage. When you're creating your storyboard, you really want to show the vision that you have. And shot selection can really, really enhance how the viewer depicts the scene. So, let's talk through the different shot sizes and how that makes the viewer feel. To start with, establishing shot. That is, in the title, it establishes the shot. So, it tends to be a shot of a location and then the next scene um, is usually inside that location. So, um, for example, like this. Here's a shot of the palace from the crown and the next shot is us entering the palace. And here's another example of the opening scene from Friends where we see the outside of the museum and the next shot we're inside the location. It's just a very easy way to clarify where we are with no dialogue and just imagery. Extreme wide is used the same way, just on a smaller scale to showcase the space. Full shot is a head to toe shot of your character, so it's a great way to showcase an action that they're doing or a shot that you use when you have more than one person on screen. Medium shot is used to emphasise both the actor and the surrounding by giving them equal presence on the screen. Close up is a great way to focus on your subject or someone's face to display the emotion they're feeling, or even something significant like the exchange of rings in a wedding scene. Medium close up is great to use when you want to build up tension in a scene, especially if you're going to use a close up next. Extreme close-up is when you're really zoomed into a subject, maybe their eye or their mouth. It's when you're uncomfortably close and it can make us feel really emotional. That's just a few shots from one website, but hopefully you can see that your shot size is super important to how you want your audience to feel, but also how you want your film to look. So camera angles are just as important as shot sizes. A camera angle that's selected can dramatically affect how we perceive a character or scene. For example, a low angle shot can make us feel the character we're focused on is strong and powerful. And a Dutch angle shot can make the viewer feel uneasy, distorted somehow, makes us feel disoriented, like the character's intoxicated. So be sure to use the more unusual angles to enhance the emotion within the scenes that you create. It's storyboard time. We've gone through angles, we've gone through shot sizes, we've gone through genre. 
Now it's time to storyboard. And this is super, super important. And I know I've said that several times before, um, but this is really, really true. Um, the reason being is because the ideas that you've had in your head and that you've visualized in your head, you can really bring it to life here. So it's, and it's the first time that you can actually bring something to life. So that's why it's really important. And it's actually a chance to see whether something that you've visualized does actually work. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're, or what you're going to do in fact, is you're going to start creating your storyboards for your films. You can, you can either do that digitally if you have the means to, or you can just do it on a piece of paper. Grab a pencil and draw six large boxes with six small boxes underneath like this. In the large box you want to add your image of what you want your shot to look like and in the smaller box you want to add the description or dialogue or just anything significant to the shot. This storyboard shows a very simplistic and character based idea for a film which could be perfect for most of your stories. You can see from the shots that they use mostly close-ups and medium shots. This allows the story to be really focused on this character only. So here's another example of a storyboard from a Spider-Man film that has a lot of detail. Um, so do add a lot of detail if you can. Um, and then you can see that there's some arrows within some of the boxes and this suggests that there will be camera movement with the action that's happening in the scene. No writing underneath the boxes, and that's okay. I think the action that's happening within the scene speaks louder than any dialogue that would be added to it. So that's okay. Um, you can have no dialogue if you want. When creating your storyboard, don't get caught up on the drawing aspect. It's really about the vision that you have and how you want each shot to look like. So don't worry if you think you can't draw well. You can even do a very detailed description of what you want the shot to look like if you don't want to draw. So, I think I've given you loads of information and hopefully enough resources to start doing your own research on what genre you'll be filming and then what kind of shots you'll be using and what kind of angles you'll be using and hopefully next time I see you, you all have your own storyboards of your films that you'll be making. Just remember to do some research of your own, perhaps watch a film that's within the same genre that you're making and you can maybe seek some inspiration from there. Yeah? Great. So I'm going to leave you there. I think I've given you enough information to start creating your storyboard. All of the resources will be in the description. And also, there's an email address where you can share all of your storyboards. I can't wait to see them. See you later. Bye! Mm -hmm.